Hello everyone, welcome to basics of building holes in Stoneworks. Here I will try and teach you how to build a hole for a ship and this won't be a block by block tutorial but this will be more of a tutorial that will teach you how to build it every time, how to build in every style. So let's get into it. So let's start off with part one. This part is pretty straightforward because it is about planning. Before you start you should plan out everything. You should plan out your length, your width and mainly also the length to width ratio you want. This is the ratio between your ship's length and her width. This ratio can change a ton between types of ships. So that's why you should also plan out the type of ship you want. And you should also find out how many propellers you want. Because they can change how your stern looks a lot. You should also plan out from which time period the ship is. Because for example, 1800s ocean liners used to have a very big length to width ratio so you should always plan out let's move on to part two now that we have it planned out so part two is about mapping it out mapping out where things will be and starting to build. So let me show you what that actually means. I am building a bunker barge, which is a type of small tanker. I planned out that my tanker will be 56 meters long and around 10 meters wide, putting the length to width ratio at around 1 to 6. For me, planning it out basically means putting a bunch of lines of blocks like this down at around where the top deck would be and finding out what's best. Now map out your bow. The steepness of your bow will also change a lot on the type of ship you are building. That's why you should put it as a factor into the planning. When dragging this slope out, you should be mindful about the fact that if you drag it too low, to make it too high, the ship might become unstable. So you should also know what height the hull should be. Another factor that is in planning is do you want to build a spell or not? Because I'm building a bunker barge, I will be building one. Just to show you and just because I'm building a bunker barge. They usually have builder spells. Obviously there are many types of builder spells. With building this part of the bow, don't be scared of redoing it all. Don't be scared of deleting some blocks and trying all over again. That just happens, that happens with everyone. Now I will map out my stern. I will use a flat stern on this ship and I will have two propellers. One thing that people don't really know about ships is the fact that their bottoms are actually quite flat. But that's not all. You should also lay out how your bow and your turn will look from above. Again, different types of ships have different sharpness of their bows. So for example, a tanker has a really flat of a bow, while your ocean liner has a really sharp bow. As usual, don't be afraid to redo it. Mistakes happen. This game is not really about making something quickly, but it's about making something look good. Now that you have this set up, you should also remember one other thing, and that is all of these lines are temporary. If any issues arise with these things, you can just change it. Now, the third part. This is the longest part usually. 
but in this video it will be the shortest and that part is building it in this part you just start to fill all of these gaps you left here and I'm moving on to part 4 this part is going to be about mistakes and I would argue this is the most important part of the video as we do learn by our mistakes so let's dive straight into it mistake number one when building their bulbous bows people many times just leave it flat here like this they make a normal hole and then they just make a big part like this and that's when you look at ships that's just not how it works so i also see this problem a lot although it's not that common as the second one this is still not really correct although it is a little closer to the right approach the right approach is to take this and make this line a lot sharper than how sharp your upper part of the bow is and wait until these two lines merge so wait until the bulbous bow merges with this i don't know if i'm explaining it well if you can understand so i will show you with this bow how how to fix this one also this may not look the best because i really built this bow in like 10 minutes and it's just not good so now i rebuilt it now this bow looks still very bad but if we don't focus on that it definitely does look better than the one we built before this it looks much smoother how it connects up with this whole part also there are many different types of bow so for example you have the teardrop shape bow that i really like and that i use basically all the time it's more of a smooth curve and you will find this on like 1940s ocean liners such as the normandy or the bremen but now on to another mistake so mistake number two Fortunately, I don't see this mistake a lot. It's actually quite rare to see, but it's quite self-explanatory. People just don't do enough curve. And this can be caused by two things. Either the person that made this just doesn't really care about how their ship looks. And I guess I understand maybe their ship is made for something totally different than looks. Or the person that made this is scared of trying to do it differently. And I understand that. Maybe they're a new player. And I remember on my first ship I did this exact same thing. And that is because I didn't know how many types of wedges, pyramids, inverse pyramids there were in the game. And I was just too scared of using these because I had no clue how they work. So my tip to people that do this is again to plan it out, to have these lines up here and to really go through the inventory and see how many items there are that they can use. The bow is much taller than the stern. And with some ships, this is true. Some ships do have a much taller bow than their stern. But the thing about those ships is it's not such a big difference. And it just doesn't look like this. This ship I built when I had like 700 hours in the game. It just looks quite weird with how the stern is very low while the bow is very high so this is the issue that's most common with my ships and it's the fourth issue and that is stability and this isn't only affected by the hull your stabilizers your superstructure basically everything affects your stability but 
you just can't call your ship condemning when if you try to steer and stop it just tips over. Fortunately there is a really quick fix to this. The main thing about this is you need to pull the center of mass down. But if you pull it down using weight blocks, that means you're gonna go get less buoyancy. But you can get more buoyancy by using the pivot bridge. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically when you put a bunch of pivots, don't connect them to electricity, and uh, they add buoyancy. When we spawn this, it's gonna float really high up and its center of mass is going to be really low. That means that this thing is very stable. Another mistake I see a lot is when people try to overcorrect for their ship being unstable and make it too wide. Fun fact, this ship actually is unstable and is also too wide. But there are two reasons I can think of why that happens. And number one, because they are trying to overcorrect for the stability issues. Number two being that when they first built their hull, for them it looked too thin. So they made it too wide. And when they put on the superstructure, now it looks too wide. Make sure to really think about the length to width ratio. And the last problem I see, and I'm again using a ship I'm very ashamed of for this, is that ships sometimes float very low and have low buoyancy in this game. And they try to overcorrect and make a gigantic drop. Like look at this. And if you make it like this, then it becomes unstable. It just doesn't work. And now, for the end of the video, I will show you some holes that I really like. And I'll tell you why I really like them. So first, let's start off with this ship. And this is one of my ships. It's my newest ship. And I really like it because how it looks under here. Now, moving on to this ship, this is a yacht. I will provide the link to it down in the description. The thing I really like about this ship is how the builder managed to pull off the design of a very flat bell very well. And also the stern looks quite nice. Another great ship that I found is this offshore support vessel. And I really like the Bilba Spell here, because the person who made this used the technique that I used, that I showed you. Here we have a ship that managed to pull off the technique with a, just a normal bow with no Bilba Spell and stuff. Quite well too. And I will post the link for all of these ships, except for this one, because it's a work in progress, in the description. And you should definitely subscribe to them, because they are some very nice vessels. Now, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something from this. I hope I didn't waste your time or something. And just before we end, I have to say some things. Firstly, don't really stress about the underwater part of your hull because it's not really going to be seen. Also, don't be afraid to completely redo your hull. Sometimes it just doesn't work, sometimes you just have to redo it. And also, don't be sad when a ship of yours or a creation of yours doesn't look the best if it doesn't work out how you wanted it to so thank you for watching again i hope you learned something in this and see ya